people always value dignity and dignity is directly related with rights Hi I am Ranjit Kumar Mahapatra I belong to a village called Banki in the coastal district of Orissa My father was working in an industry the industry collapsed during that time I was studying in an English medium school but we have to come back to our village those days were very hard my education was stopped I have to learn oriya and started my education career in an oriya medium school my father became ill after the factory collapsed and being the elder son I had to support the family so I started teaching small children and along with that I have to take forward my education so both the burden was on me and that was one of the biggest difficulty with me during my childhood and those days were very hard our friends relatives they away from us they didn't try to come closer so I felt very lonely during that time. I felt that there is no support around me. There were lots of difficulties actually during that time. When I was in the English medium school, my papa was supporting and the school was a very big and nice school, luxury school. And when I came back to my village, it was a government school with very uh, low level amenities. and in the village i had only one uniform with that uniform i have to go to the village i could not get papers and pens so i have to reuse the paper the teachers were very supportive throughout my life i still i remember i could not uh, give the exam fees not even a single exam fees i could deposit in time because i have to support my brothers and sisters first i used to pay the uh, tuition fees of my sisters brothers and by that time i used to get up early in the morning at 5 am i used to do my first round of tuition then i go to college i come back in the evening and i start my second round of tuition and those days were really hard now i used to think of the name papa gave my name ranjit i always thought that this is a war and i will win ran means war and jit means it's winner i always thought myself as a winner and whatever problem used to come i had confidence within me that i will win during that time i didn't have a plan with me actually i just woke up i thought that working is everything i just worked just worked studying and working i thought that the only asset i could gain is education and education is the only thing which can take me out of this problem okay. but uh, education getting good education what is good education what is bad education or what is low level education i have no idea i just thought that i will go on reading anything whatever thing what book every book i used to study but i could not buy books in my high school days my teachers used to run a voluntary organization in that voluntary organization there was an orphanage in which i used to spend time with the children there was an old age home in that old age home i used to spend time with elder people and at times there were training programs for farmers and i used to work as a volunteer and i helped them in cleaning the serving ground picking the leaf plates and throwing them in the dustbin that was my first exposure to social work okay. i was one of the best volunteers in those days my teachers encouraged me and i was given the chance to lead youth leadership training program okay. and that was a very good platform to 
develop my confidence. Okay. After that, there was a break. I went into college. I was in science stream. Then I studied there. After three years, when my graduation was completed, there was a break for me again. Hmm. I went to Bhuneshwar, the capital city of Orissa. There in a small institute, I started learning computers. From there, I went to teach computers in People's Forum, a voluntary organization again. Okay. There I got exposure and I came to know that there is a course called MSW, Master in Social Work. And once, a group of students from the MSW college came to our institute and I was very much excited being with them, visiting the field and their guide told me, why don't you appear or join MSW? So I appeared the entrance and got through. During that time, we formed sadhana. Some of my friends and me used to sit and discuss for long hours. How can we give back something to the society? Because my friends were disability professionals, they were orthotic and prosthetic engineers, they were physiotherapists, they are speech therapists. By the time when I was in MSW, I had developed an interest in community development. So we thought that can we bring community development and rehabilitation together? So that was the beginning and we decided to start Sadhana, Society for Action in Disability and Health Awareness. And we decided to work in community-based rehabilitation approach. And that's all, it began in 1996. We started our work in Mayurbanj, the northernmost district of Orissa. Our work initially was limited to 13 villages. In those 13 villages, we used to visit door to door and help the parents of children with disabilities to understand what is disability, what was the cause and how the rehabilitation can be taken forward, how we can support the child within the family, within the community. One day what happened, in the month of December, we were having a picnic party. After the picnic party, one of my friend, he gave me the Ford Foundation uh, fellowship format and said that, I think you are a right person to apply for this. Working with the community, I felt that human rights can address the issues at the grassroots level. For that, I wanted more exposure and education, which I felt that IFP fellowship can support me. This exposure helped me in understanding what international education scenario is. It prepared me before I left this country and I entered into an alien country. During my pre-academic training, I was looking for a course which can help me in my work. At University of London, I got a course on human rights which is having three different aspects. One is understanding or concept on human rights. The second one is securing or applying human rights. Third one is law and newer trends in human rights. This was a very good course and when I came back, I found this course is really very relevant to my work. During my first few days, when I was in the classroom, I find students eating, drinking in the classroom. This was very new to me. I thought this is purely an indiscipline. But when I found that the professors are comfortable with that, then I accepted it as a different culture. Opening a new bar in a community is opposed by our people. Whereas I found pubs and bars within the campus, within the university itself. That's quite amazing for me. I was about to finish my course in London. There were two options for me, whether I should return to India or I should search for a job and get absorbed in London. Anyway, it was a very difficult time for me to decide because on one hand I have my family with me, the need for the family, need of finance, but every time I was feeling that the mission I started 10 years back also needs me and without me, the mission could not go farther. So that's the reason why I came back.
The difficulties I faced when I returned to my community and my work is that I was having many dreams. The country where I was studying was very fast and the movement, everything which is moving in our country is very slow, I felt. This was a very uh, tough time for me. When I came back to India, my friends, my relatives, most of them expected me to join INGOs or big multinational companies and do some human rights, corporate social responsibility work. But I, it was a very big dilemma for me. I could not decide whether to join a big NGO or to join my dream mission which I started 10 years back which is growing smoothly and the growth is very natural and slow. The pace at which I am growing, the pace at which my mission sadhana is growing was quite different. This was clearly visible to my friends and families. And this time was very difficult for me. I struggled for about a year. And finally, I decided that I will join my mission. I don't want money. While doing the human rights course in London, I always dreamt that when I come back to India, when I will join my mission again, I will share this knowledge with my team so that we can change our program. We can have more effective program in the community where the program will address the human rights issues in the grassroots level. Applying human rights knowledge in our field is really difficult, but I am enjoying it now because disability rights are human rights. After this course, I can clearly link human rights with disability rights and the entire environment, the advocacy environment is talking of rights, disability rights and right-based approach. So this is the right time I have got the knowledge from University of London which I can use it effectively and change the situation of disabled people in my community. Rights are violated when people are vulnerable and powerless. So I try to organize people, people with disabilities into groups and networks. I am trying to link them with state level networks and it is working wonderful. Really. I was amazed that day when there were about 500 persons with disabilities in a peaceful rally. They came with a 10 point demand and they submitted it to the district collector as well as to the block development officer. My confidence is gradually growing because people always value dignity and dignity is directly related with rights. And that's the reason why people are organizing themselves and they are trying to fight for their rights and they are gradually identifying their rights at grassroots level. They are gradually identifying the entitlements and they are organizing themselves. The strength of rights lies with the marginalized people when they are organized. And now that people have started organizing themselves, though they are marginalized because of their disability, but now I feel that gradually more and more people will join this mission and one day, day will come when these people will organize themselves at district level, at state level and at national level and that day is not far away. <coughs> the census figures say in our district there are more than 54,000 people suffering from disability but actually the figures which we get now from the field at least 2% of the people they suffer from disability that means at least 44,000 people suffer from severe disability in Mayurbhanj, the district, one of the district in Orissa and there are 30 districts in Orissa. So it's a huge problem. It needs to be addressed and it needs to be worked upon. If we consider India, there are more than 2 crore people who suffer from severe disability and their rights are violated every day, every night. So we need to work together, we need to link up with different people, different organizations, those who work with disability. And that's my mission. I would like to thank Ford Foundation International Fellowship Program because it takes care of building a child, building a person right from the grassroots level up to international level. Thanks Ford Foundation International Fellowship Program.